Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, today we're celebrating another milestone, 500 subscribers if you can believe that. Seems like just yesterday we were here celebrating our 250 subscriber milestone. Uh, wanted to do something a little different this time than my normal routine on these episodes, something hopefully more entertaining. I'm gonna take you guys along with me on a road trip up to Utah over the next several days Kind of give you a behind the scenes look of what it's like to be on the road with me here on the Cactus Atlas. So thank you everybody for watching and subscribing and please enjoy. Let's go do this. All right, I am officially on the road, heading up Interstate 17 North. Uh, the road trip has officially begun and my ultimate destination on this trip is way up at Goblin Valley, Utah. It's about an eight, nine hour drive from Phoenix. Um, I decided to get a little bit of a head start. Um, I'm gonna be driving up to Flagstaff for the evening. So not making the whole drive tonight, spending the night at a hotel. And then tomorrow morning, I'm gonna get up and drive to Goblin Valley where I'll be camping for a few nights. There'll be a lot of stuff to do and see up there, making multiple videos on this trip and some other things in store. So this particular video isn't really to go in depth in those locations, gonna be making separate videos, but you'll see little bits and pieces, maybe teasers perhaps, as to other things to come. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be fun just to kind of do this road trip, stop at different sites, and just see where the wind takes us. So that's kind of the plan. So there is a plan, but there's a lot of looseness to the plan, so um, I like to keep it loose like that. So this is a, not a really a new gadget per se. I've had that uh, GoPro that you see there mounted for a long time, but just bought the suction cup mount to create kind of a dash cam to film the road on the journey. Uh, got it hooked up to uh, USB, uh, so it's being powered, not gonna drain the battery. And yeah, so that's one of the um, gadgets that I use here on the channel. So we'll see how that works uh, on this trip. So yeah, the GoPro, I've had it on almost every video I've done and I use it occasionally. Um, usually it's more trouble than it's worth really for the type of stuff that I do. Um, the audio is horrible, so I've ordered an external mic actually, which I'm getting, haven't received it yet. Something I'm gonna be trying to make that GoPro into a more viable vlogging camera by enhancing the audio. But wanted to do the dash cam thing for a long time. When you see shots of me on the road or you see the road, I've typically, by hand held the camera that I'm currently filming with out the window. Really low tech, dangerous, so figured I'd do it more safely this time. So I'll let you know how it works out. And on that note about equipment, um, throughout time, a couple of times, we've been asked by different people in comments, like, hey, like, what, what do you use for this or what's that? Um, so we're gonna start putting links to all of our equipment and doodads um, in the, the description down below. So do look for those if you're ever curious. Um, we'll give you tips on what we like, what we don't like, stuff like that. And you know, for this particular episode, I'm gonna be sharing a lot of the uh, behind the scenes stuff that I use in case you're interested to see how I do it. Maybe you're interested in picking up on a vlogging kind of adventure journey too. And I've got some really cool recommendations if you're ever looking for good starter level kind of equipment for that. So heading up north on I-17, this is one of my favorite parts of the drive. You ascend in elevation all the way from Phoenix, and then you come to these steep grade signs and you start to go down very quickly, down into the Verde Valley. And it's so beautiful, you could see for miles. And I'm out here around sunset now. This might be my first time actually uh, doing this at this particular time of the day. Usually it's um, much earlier in the day, not, not now. Or maybe I'm heading back the other way. It wouldn't get the same view, but boy, is this something to see right now. And yeah, on days like today where you're coming down here, you can actually see the San Francisco peaks of Flagstaff uh, poking up above the horizon. Uh, may not be too visible on the GoPro. I'm not sure what that's gonna come out like, but I could see it clearly. Uh, pink clouds on the horizon. Uh, boy, knowing that Flagstaff there where the San Francisco peaks are, that's my destination actually, but we're still quite far away. Um, it's amazing how far away on the landscape you can see those things. 
probably easily over 100 miles away in some places. Um, so it's deceivingly further away than you'd think. We're not even up to Sedona yet at this point. All right, I've arrived at the Hampton Inn and Suites in East Flagstaff. Uh, just checked in, got stuff out of my car, heading up to the room. All right, I'm looking for room 225. My quarters for this night. Honey, I'm home. Well, I've arrived here at my room at the Hampton Inn and Suites in East Flagstaff. Seems like a very, very new hotel. You could smell that like new um, structure smell. It just smells new. Um, and I'm really impressed with the room actually. It was very, uh, very affordable. I think I paid about 139 or something like that through hotels.com. Uh, really modern, really clean. Um, let me give you a quick tour of the room and show you. One thing I immediately noticed was the floor. It's got that like very modern looking tile here in the floor. Kind of goes into the bathroom. And everything's nice and tidy. I washed my hands earlier, so I'm already kind of spoiling the restroom. And take a look at the shower. Looks pretty clean. Now you've got yourself your television, little desk over there and nice decorations on the walls looks like you got some basics here too a little coffee maker um well no that's interesting kind of like that actually it's different drawers now on this side you actually have a mini fridge too and it's of course empty yeah so i'm digging the room so so far so good um not gonna, I don't do hotel reviews, so I'm not gonna go in depth. Just wanted to give you a quick look in case you're looking for a place to stay. Once again, this is the Hampton Inn and Suites, East Flagstaff, right off of Interstate 40 by Route 89. Um, I, that's why I stayed here, by the way, is because I have to hook up with 89 North. That's kind of how you get to the North Room of the Grand Canyon, Page, those areas. Um, so this is a perfect you know, place to stay if you need to break up a long drive like I did. Um, so I think it's a really good choice, really affordable, and so far very impressed. Hey, top of the morning to you. It's a beautiful morning out here in Flagstaff, very clear skies. Still see the moon um, up in the sky. I'm just putting stuff in the car. Gonna grab a quick bite to eat, and then we're gonna hit the road. Well, because of the pandemic, they're not doing your uh, traditional kind of continental breakfast. They've got these grab and go bags. Um, so I think I'm gonna take advantage of these. All right, I grabbed me a bag. Let's go see what kind of treasures await. All right, I washed my hands. Let's see what we got in the bag. So the uh, bottled water and an orange. A Nature Valley granola bar and what we got here this is interesting a an orange chocolate chunk and vanilla streusel hmm that, that sounds kind of neat I may save that actually for later on in the trip um, a little bit less than I would think I mean uh, you know I guess I'm thankful for anything but definitely doesn't beat like a hot continental breakfast but what are you gonna do I mean uh, this is a pandemic breakfast after all, so uh, yeah, pretty nice, I guess. So one thing I really like, they have these little uh, things of hand sanitizer by the elevators, so you can give yourself a squirt, and they tell you to do that uh, before pushing buttons or after pushing buttons. Beautiful, beautiful morning here in Flagstaff. One thing I know I appreciate very much, and you probably would too, especially if you're from Phoenix, is I wouldn't say it's cold, but I'm gonna guess it's in the, uh, the lower 60s probably, maybe even the upper 50s right now, and it feels so good coming from temps that stay into the hundreds well into the night where I'm from. Mmm, loving it. 
All right, I am all set. I have fueled up. Um, it's always good to fuel up before you head out to the uh, more desolate areas of Arizona because your options for fueling up become uh, ever increasingly more limited. Um, but yeah, just enjoying Flagstaff in the morning here. Always a beautiful sight. Love the mountains around here. All right, making a quick pit stop here at a Safeway grocery store uh, before I leave Flagstaff. This was part of my plan. I didn't really buy any perishable goods. I just have a bunch of dry, non-perishable food items. So I thought maybe I buy some hot dogs, we'll find out. Uh, maybe some fresh fruit, stuff like that. Stuff that I wanna put in a cooler. Didn't buy ice yet either. I figured I'd just wait till I got up here, uh, get ice in the cooler so I didn't waste buying ice last night that I'd, I'd have to replace this morning. I think where I'm going also, um, the nearest ice might be like 30 miles away I hear. I called them and asked. Um, so just trying to make the ice last as long as possible. All right, let me show you my haul from the grocery store. I actually was able to find firewood up here. You're not gonna find that in Phoenix this time of the year. Not sure if we're gonna find it up at uh, Goblin Valley. I, I've heard they sell it at the visitor center, but I'm not sure if the visitor center is gonna be open. So I got some just in case. And then as for food, but a lot of fruits here and vegetables um, and bottled water ice. Of course, the pineapple Fanta's in there. There's a pineapple Haritos right there. Uh, so that's really all I needed was the pineapple uh, sodas. Um, opted not to get the hot dogs actually this time. For some reason, I think that mountain looks really nice here in the morning light here in Flagstaff from the Safeway parking lot. Just wanted to take in a quick view before I hit the road. And by the way, don't worry, that's not all my food. I've got this grocery bag full. Uh, I got peanut butter in there, um, a, a lot of bread, um, cliff bars. There's a bunch of stuff in there. So I'm not gonna go hungry. I'll probably come home with over half of that stuff, knowing me. You know, I know I've said this before, but I still just marvel at, you know, like seeing these big ponderosa pine here. I'm going to be driving through that for a wee little bit and then it's going to turn into barren desert. So Arizona has a lot of extreme changes. It's the beautiful San Francisco peaks of Flagstaff in the morning, seen from the east side. Ah, very nice. You really got to love Arizona. It's just amazing how it goes from desert to pine ponderosa forest. And now we're back out into this kind of open plain again. Uh, looks like maybe juniper, um, some other kind of shrubs, and you can just see for miles. Uh, man, I love Arizona. So this is a little stop off of 89 that I've wanted to see for a while. I'm not gonna go in today because I think there are a lot of signs here that there's high risk of COVID exposure here. Um, so I'm gonna play it safe, but I just wanted to at least take a look because uh, this place looks pretty, pretty cool. Maybe once all this stuff passes, I'll have to come back sometime with Amy and we'll explore this place. So this is Route 89, and you can see that bridge up there. That's actually a historic bridge, and that's what I've come to see. Quite honestly, I don't know if this is the way to go. There's like this little path down here. It goes under the bridge. Kind of confused how to get over there, actually. I know you can't walk on the bridge, but um, I know there's a historic plaque over there and it's all very overgrown. So, um, hmm, not sure how close we're gonna be able to get. Now I can cross under 89 here, uh, but right over there is the bridge. I wanna say the bridge was the only way to get across what I believe is the Little Colorado River. Now there's a canyon right there. It's actually not too deep. Um, but how the heck do you get over there? Maybe I'll cross under the bridge, but I don't see any trail coming out of, over there. So I'm wondering if there's a path up there that you can go down. Um, I don't see signs saying not to go. So I'm gonna go take a peek maybe up here. Now here's that historical plaque commemorating what was originally known as Tanner's Crossing. 
a quick view of the bridge. Now we can't walk out there, unfortunately, but get a pretty good view of what it might be like. Unfortunately, I don't have internet access. I was gonna try to hit Wikipedia because I was reading about this bridge, or maybe there was a bridge before this bridge. I think this is a pretty old bridge though. Um, at one point, apparently, someone tried to cross a bunch of sheep over one of the bridges here, and it partially collapsed. Wondering if it's this bridge here or not, or maybe it's predecessor if there was one. But yeah, um, this area has been around for a very long time. Oh, there you go. Established 1916. So I knew this was old. I know they have a hotel here, or a motel. It's actually quite nice. So if you're ever driving up to like the North Rim of the Grand Canyon or Utah, and you want a place to stay, like if this was open, this probably would have been a better choice than Flagstaff last night. Uh, got me a little bit further along, by, but still reasonable from Phoenix to get here. So yeah, I'll have to keep this in mind for the future. All right, so just so you guys know, so you don't make the same mistake, apparently I wasn't supposed to be behind those flags. Uh, my sincere apologies. Uh, to those folks there. I didn't see any clear signs that said that and I kind of walked down that path um, By the road, so I kind of came around from the back. So I was not supposed to be In that area. So a gentleman came out and kind of shooed me away um, asked me what I was doing just let him know and Yeah, he just kindly informed me you're not supposed to be back there and I left so I don't think any harm done um, but yeah, in case you're wondering and you're driving through there, I don't think I was supposed to be doing any of that stuff. So, oops, sorry. And now we find ourselves kind of like in a badland setting, uh, kind of reminiscent of the petrified forest and painted desert actually out here. Uh, once again, extreme changes in the landscape. It doesn't take long to go from one thing to another. So I'm pretty sure we're still on the Navajo Nation at this point. Uh, about an hour out from Cayenta, Arizona, kind of going up to the Monument Valley, like Four Corners region. We're not going to quite go to the Four Corners here on this trip, but we're going to pass into Utah eventually, uh, be very near Monument Valley, if not like being able to, we should be able to see it actually, I think from the state route at some point. Uh, but yeah, just once again, look at how the, uh, the scenery changed. Now it's more like grasslands and it's very expansive. Um, not too unlike when we were recently at Hamalavi State Park in Northeast Arizona. Uh, kind of similar terrain to what we saw there. A lot of shrubs. Absolutely beautiful though. Very barren though and desolate. In a good way. These are interesting formations. I believe this is what's known as elephant's feet. There's a little pull off off the road here. I'm assuming it's okay to stop here. It's right off of the main state route. There's no sign saying you can't. Um, I've read that there may sometimes be vendors and stuff set up here, but it's the middle of the week and with everything going on with a pandemic, maybe that's why it's just pretty barren right now. These things are huge and very colorful. A lot of graffiti, unfortunately, on the rear side of this thing. It's really a beautiful formation, though. Anyway, there you have it. Um, what I believe is known as elephant's feet. Uh, definitely worth a stop. Very interesting and unique formations right off the road. I just killed about five minutes here in my journey. Got a few uh, photos, some video. Gonna hit the road now. Um, so yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, that was really neat. I really enjoyed that actually. Uh, yeah, you just gotta explore in life, you know, sometimes. Just take that extra couple minutes, get out of your car, and enjoy the beauty of nature. All right, I am pretty close to Monument Valley now. I think this is the town of Cayenta. I just uh, decided to fuel up. I didn't need too much gas, but just trying to keep the tank full uh, because I think that at some point we're not gonna see services for a very long time. 
I just saw a sign, in fact, that said I'm about 18 miles from the Utah state line. So we will be out of Arizona pretty soon. I'm still wearing my mask. <laughs> uh, I'm just so used to wearing masks now that sometimes I forget to take them off. Wow, this landscape just opened up and there's some beautiful formations out here. Uh, I love this part of the country. And kind of off there to the right is the very iconic landscape of Monument Valley. Uh, once again, I think it's closed because of the pandemic, but um, you can kind of see some of the well-known formations. I don't know how good of a look we're going to get at today, but absolutely beautiful. Just wanted to make a quick stop just to take it in really quick. Yeah, Monument Valley is an amazing, amazing place uh, if you've never been. Um, I believe it's part of the Navajo Nation. It's um, not a national park or anything like that. I've been there a couple times. They, you kind of drive through it on a dirt road. You pay your admission to get in. Been a very long time. Uh, probably not going to be able to see it, I'm going to guess, for another year. Uh, but we'll come back up here for sure uh, when we get an opportunity in the future. Amy's never seen this either, so... I know it's something I think she'd be very interested in seeing. Man, this is absolutely beautiful out here. Um, really good views. So yeah, here at the state line, um, take a stop if you can't make it to Monument Valley. You'll get some awesome views out there. Totally worth it. And we made it this far. <laughs> Still got uh, probably three, four hours left to go. But I'm having a good time and I hope you are too. If you look way out beyond, I think you can see some of the mittens as they're known. Because they look like mittens. Those rock formations out there. Alright, I guess it's time to get back on the road. Um, there'll probably be a couple more stops along the way for sure. A uh, quick time check though. It's 10.45 in the morning. According to Google, I still have about three and a half hours left to go. So still making really good time. Uh, just note when you cross into Utah from Arizona, you are changing time zones actually. So maybe, I'm not sure what time it actually is. My clock might, yeah, actually there you go. It's actually 11.45 a.m. I'm sitting right between 10.45 a.m. and 11.45 a.m. So we lost that hour. Um, probably gonna get to Goblin Valley a little after 3 p.m., which is totally cool. Um, still will have plenty of daylight. I'm not really in a rush. So yeah, let's uh, continue down the road. So you've got some scenic turnouts, it says, for the next 12 miles. So we can kind of enjoy Monument Valley from the road a little bit, which is really cool. Let's take a look. Just look at this landscape. My goodness. So iconic. This is the American Southwest, folks, in all of its glory, in, in my opinion. I love it out here. I believe there's gonna be more pullouts so we can enjoy the views more. Um, so yeah, gotta get up to that campground, but just wanted to give you guys a little taste. just one scenic turnout after another but looking straight ahead right now um, I think we're exiting Monument Valley I'm pretty sure because it's starting to open up into more of like a 
uh, shrubby grassland again, not seeing as many features. So uh, that's okay. Because I got to be getting up to Goblin Valley. We still got a ways to go. Um, but yeah, that was amazing. So I'm at a pretty famous spot. I think this is Forest Gump Hill. You recognize that from the movie? So yeah, it's actually quite challenging. It's pretty crowded here. So to get a shot with nobody in the road right now, probably not gonna happen. I don't have the time, unfortunately, but yeah, check out that iconic view. It's a little too bad. Maybe on the way home, I'll try to do it again. Um, I wanted to kind of try to recreate the scene from Forrest Gump there on what I believe is Forrest Gump Hill back there. Um, need to study the actual footage to find line up the shot accurately, but I think I was in the right vicinity. But as you can see, it's a very popular spot. It's ironic because I, I didn't see any tourists really, or very few, all the way until I got there. And everybody's stopping there and trying to find a safe time to get out on the road uh, without somebody in the shot. It just wasn't happening. Um, if I was patient and I had 20, 30 minutes to spare, I probably could have finagled something, but unfortunately time is not on my side and I got to keep moving on here. But that was really cool though. I really enjoyed that. All right, time for a little bit of a road trip check-in. So I just passed through the town of Mexican Hat, Utah. Um, we drove through Monument Valley, made many stops. Um, that ate up some time, and right now I am exactly three hours away, according to Google, uh, from my destination. Uh, probably not going to have as many stops, I think, between now and where I'm going. <laughs> Alright, I lied. Another scenic stop. I had to stop and see this because this is pretty cool. Now I see why it's called Mexican Hat. There's something out there called Mexican Hat Rock. Check this out. Alright, there's Mexican Hat Rock. Might be kind of hard to see since it's sitting in front of that background. But that is amazing. Look at that rock. It's just barely balanced up there. Looks like something from a Looney Tunes cartoon, like Roadrunner or something. <laughs> you know, on road trips, you gotta remember to eat too. I'm pretty bad about that. I get excited, I get all caffeinated with coffee. But yeah, it's time to have a snack pack. Some cheese, carrots, and grapes as I continue to make my way up the road here. This is one of the most confusing roads I've ever seen. I mean, look right ahead of me. There's just a sheer cliff wall. Where the hell are we gonna go? <laughs> Did I go the wrong way? I mean, Google's still telling me to go this way. Looks like we're gonna have some steep switchbacks up here. This is freaky. Like all these giant boulders out here? Oh my God. And this road's getting really narrow now. It's like, did I go the right way? Is, are those boulders gonna fall on me? That is scary. Oh my God, I'm getting like goosebumps over here. This is beautiful, <laughs> but oh, wow. Pavement ends, oh crap. All right, so the pavement ends and I think we're doing these steep things up for a while. I think I read about this, so I hope I'm going the right way. Google, don't screw with me now. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna put the camera away so I can get both hands on the wheel. But first, look at that. This is why they say the West is the best. Just look at these views though. And there's nobody here. I saw one car pass, but that is it. I feel alone. Wondering if I'm ever gonna make it to uh, <laughs> my destination. Woo! Here's a better perspective of this road we're going up. Up, up, in a way. Yeah, look how sharp this curve is, but look at that. Oh my gosh. That landscape, 
This might be one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever seen. Now we can see kind of facing, I'm guessing that's north-ish. I've lost my sense of direction. Pretty sure that's north somewhere over here. And that we face this way, and there's that road again that we came up. So we came out from Mexican Hat, which is somewhere now way down that ways. Monument Valley is somewhere way off in the distance. I don't even know if those cliffs way off in the distance might be Monument Valley. Who knows anymore? I've lost track of time, distance. I don't even know where I'm at anymore. I'm just odd. I fear this uh, road trip video is gonna be an hour long. It might have to be, so be it. This is how we celebrate 500 subscribers, guys. All right, I think it's safe to say now uh, we are back on paved roads. So it's really just that section to get up that uh, hill or that cliff um, or mountain. <laughs> Whoa, and now we're at the top and look at this. It's like juniper trees. Hmm. That's just really, a, look at, that's how you see how drastically things change here in the southwest. I mean, we were just looking at like really red rock desert, came up over the hill, and now it's green. Like literally within seconds, there's like a dividing line, boom, in your face. Juniper's as far as the eye can see. I love it, I love it. All right, um, just to give you guys some awareness here, um, I have not seen any or barely any signs of civilization for a very long time. Probably since Mexican hat, actually. Pretty sure. No gas stations, nothing. Uh, just came across another sign. Uh, just hooked up with another route here. Uh, there's a town called Hanksville, uh, which is where the next services are. That's another 93 miles from where I'm at now. And it said no services until we get there. So almost 100 miles till that. Plus, whatever it is, since I came from Mexican hat, it's a very long way. So um, I would recommend if you do this, do like I did. I filled up in Cayenta before Monument Valley. Um, there are a couple other opportunities to do so after that. But yeah, this is true, true wilderness out here. Yeah, still making my way north and uh, just a lot of red rocks, juniper trees. It's actually, you know what this kind of looks like is Sedona. Not as much character as Sedona at this this point, but uh, not too far off. You got that coloration, the red rocks and the junipers. It just gets better, <laughs> better and better. How is that possible? You just look at this, I'm standing in the middle of the road. There's nobody. All right, you know me. We gotta go check some stuff out here. Just look at that. Right now, I mean, there's a slight breeze, but it is an immaculate silence out here. It reminds me back in 2004, I did a lot of hiking out in Canyonlands, uh, not far from here. And I, I remember remarking, I actually made a home video <laughs> of that. And I just remember remarking in that video that silence. This is that silence again. That same silence. It's a recognizable silence. Isn't that weird? Now I recall seeing on maps something called Fry Canyon. And I've been following, I think, this thing for who knows how many miles now. I'm going to guess 30, 40, 50. You can kind of see we've been just kind of winding around that. And this thing's been off to my right the whole time. How cool would that just be to canyon near that and walk that whole thing? I'm assuming that's a thing and you can do that. If anybody watching knows that, let me know because I'm going to put that on my list. That'd be a long one though. <laughs> so I don't know if there's places to camp in there or what, but wowie zowie. And if that isn't some twisted juniper right there, I don't know what is. You know, I feel like I barely scratched the surface with uh, Utah. Technically, I've been to four of the big five national parks over the years. Here on the Cactus Atlas, you've seen two of them if you've seen some of our older videos, uh, Bryce Canyon and Zion. And Zion, I have got much left to do there. I pretty much just hiked the Narrows and camped there, and that was about it. Gotta go back. But this state, 
um, it's just tough because Arizona, my home state, I love. And then it's been so long since I've been in this region of uh, Utah that I think I got to say, I think Utah, out of all the states in the Southwest, even though this might be sacrilegious against my home state, I, there's just something about this state and the endless landscapes and just the surprises that, uh, yeah, this just can't be beat. It just, it's, it, it speaks to my soul. That's the only way I can put it. I had to pull over again and just take this in. Oh my goodness, that's like Mars. It's like Valley of Fire all over again, but on a larger scale. Oh my God, <laughs> it just keeps getting better and better. Colorado River, this gorge up here, this canyon, we're gonna go sneak down here, see if we can sneak a peek. I don't think I'm ever gonna make it to Goblin Valley, am I? <laughs> How can you not stop though and take that in? Holy sh! Sorry, I only reserve that for very special occasions on this channel. And I bleep it out. But, what else am I supposed to do with that? Hope you guys know that I'm not really complaining. <laughs> well, I'm kind of just like, man, I, I really just want to get to my destination, but. <sighs> Gotta stop. Gotta stop. I can't. <laughs> I can't stop. I want to stop, but I can't stop. I gotta keep on pushing. Oh my God, look at this. Must stay in car must continue to destination, must not stop. Still have over an hour to go. <laughs> At this point, I still have to go to the campground, set up my tent, and then actually film a big chunk of the campground guide episode to stay on the schedule that I need to stay on. Because I got <clears throat> three days of just action-packed filming to do. And uh, I definitely am over budget by a couple hours now, um, driving through here. And it's just, it, it just keeps blowing my ever loving mind. I mean, this is just like a nuclear bomb blew up in my head, kind of mind blown kind of stuff. My hand has been in the cookie jar so many times today. There ain't no cookies left. There ain't no cookies left. All right, time for another quick check-in. Uh, got some cell phone service, barely, again. 
Um, I think I might be about 10 miles out of a town called Hanksville. My only chance to get ice, I heard, gasoline, and that's probably about another 30 miles to Goblin Valley from there. I'm out here in this open desert now, I can see for miles. Um, so, yeah, like I am starting to get tired and loopy, I will admit. It has been a journey today. <laughs> All right, it's the last few miles. Uh, really interesting landscape. Some of it is very reminiscent of Valley of Fire, actually. A lot of like white sandstone. Uh, Valley of Fire has red rocks, plus a lot of white also. Um, then I see some landscapes that looks like, I see buttes, red rocks, orange dirt. Still no goblins, but uh, I know they're out there. Getting excited. I made it. Phase one of the road trip. Almost complete. Yeah. Yo he cantar esta canción para mi gente. 